Never trust input from a user. This is extremely important both in the client when they're filling out a form you can provide instant feedback but more importantly on the server because you need to stop bad data from getting into your database. So you do that through validating the data and we're going to look at a tool called Zod today which makes that extremely easy to do. We're in an API route in Next.js and it's going to receive some user data via a post and we want to validate that before saving it to the database. So to get started, we're actually going to use something called Thunder Client to post the data to this API route in Next.js. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the URL, right? So it's localhost 3000 slash API users create. And we want to say that it's a post request, not a get. And then our body will be the data that we're posting. And I'm just going to paste in the data that we'll be sending it. So we're sending some info about a user, name, email, confirm email, uh, what role is this person maybe applying for, uh, what is their website, are they available to work right now, and what is their experience over a few different languages, and a coupon code. So if we send this right now, we get success true, and that is because I am just hard coding a response success true. So we need to work on the logic now to validate the incoming data. I'm actually going to copy this data and I'm going to paste this right here as a comment so that we have it as a reference of this is what's incoming. Okay, so right here what we're going to do is we're going to say um, the result of saving this data will be an await of save data function that we need to go create. Oops. And it's going to receive the request.body, which is sort of the raw incoming data. So just below, we'll define this function. So it's an async function called save data that is going to take in some raw data and we'll just give it a type of any. And what it's going to respond with is a promise that resolves to either success, which is a Boolean, and then errors, which will either be sort of like a JSON object that contains all of the info about its errors or null if everything's good. So we'll put this in here, we'll say success is a boolean, and errors we'll just say is any. Okay, so it's mad right now because we haven't yet built this thing. So let's start, and what we're going to do is we're going to say try, and inside of try we're going to try to get the parsed data, or the validated data. So in order to do that, we need to basically define um, using Zod, what our schema looks like, sort of what is our definition of the data we're supposed to be receiving. So we'll call this user, and the way you define it is by using this Z function that comes imported from Zod. So because we're defining an object, that's what we use with Zod. And now we start to describe what each incoming field looks like. So our first field right here is a name. So we can say that this is the z function dot string. I guess it's not a function, it's an object that has uh, dot string, a function we can call. So why don't we just save this and come back and start to use it even though we haven't yet fully fleshed out what our schema looks like. So we're going to say user dot parse and we're going to pass in our raw data just like that. And what we need to do now is if there's like a validation error, it's actually going to throw an exception. So we need to catch that. So we're going to catch E. And for now, why don't we just console.log this out. And down here at the bottom, we are going to say return success of true errors of null. So obviously we're not returning the errors yet but we're making TypeScript happy and we can move on and start to iterate on this. So just before we actually call this, we're gonna come up here to result and we're now going to return that instead and hit save. So when I go over and send this again, it still says success of true, but if we come down here, no issues. So that actually means that it validated correctly. So you may be thinking, hey, you sent in a lot of data, but we only set up so far name. So what it does is if it sees a field that it doesn't recognize, the default behavior is just to strip it out. So if we were to console.log the actual data, make the request again, 
look in the console, we can see that it stripped out everything except uh, name of Lee Halliday. So that's no good. We need to go add in the rest of the um, fields that we're going to validate. Now you can modify this behavior. You can say strict. And what strict does is it basically explodes if it receives data that, data that it's not expecting. So here it, we threw this exception, we console.log did, and it says unrecognized keys, email, confirm email, role, website, etc. All of the fields that we hadn't yet defined. So we're going to go with sort of a non strict form right now, but we can fix this error uh, consoling. We don't just need to log it to the console. What we can do is we can check if E is an instance of Zod error. So the reason we have to do this is because it's possible that different types of errors get thrown within this try block. So we need to check, is it a Zod type of error? If so, we know how to deal with it. Else, we can just sort of rethrow the error. So something up chain um, can, can catch that and deal with it. So what do we want to do if it's a Zod type of error? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to return a success of false. And this time we're going to return some info about the errors. And we're going to say it's e.flatten. And because we're working with a nested type of object that has an array of experiences, it's just going to flatten everything out and provide nice error messages that you could display to the user in the client. So if we save this, and let's say that we want string to be a number, even though we don't, but just to sort of see what's happening. Send this. Now we get this error message back. Success was false. Errors. So it gives you two things. Form errors are sort of errors about like all of the data generically, the whole object. And then field errors are about one field specifically. So in this case, name, it expected a number but received a string. So that's where you get all of the, the data back about the errors. We're going to go and just say that it's a string. So next up we have email. It's also a string, but we like any string isn't an email address. Luckily Z, uh, Zod comes with email. So we can apply that validation and we'll do the same to confirm email. So it's z.string.email again. Oops. Save that, request it, should be valid. Let's go down here. And now we've got this data coming back. So we need to go finish out the rest of the, uh, the validations. So after confirm email, we have role. So role in this case, Yes, it could just be a string, but what if they were specific strings that we wanted to look for? In other words, an enum. We can use Zod to define an enum, and we'll just pass in an array of the uh, potential values. So we'll say senior engineer, staff engineer, and engineering manager. Those are the, the values that we're going to accept, and maybe they correspond to a select dropdown on the front end. So next up, after role, we have website URL. So this is a string, but not everyone has a website. So we can say that it's nullable or optional, meaning you don't even need to send this field up. It can be left out and we're okay with that. It can be empty, but if it's there, it's got to be a string. And they actually have something called URL that you can check to make sure it's an actual URL. So if we save this, let's mess with our data a little bit. We'll add an A, we'll make it an invalid URL, and we'll change this to a CA, which isn't incorrect yet, but we want these to be the same, so we're going to look at how to do that later. So if we save it, we get some uh, validations back that website URL is invalid, that's correct, and that it didn't receive uh, the right uh, enum value, one of the options and it tells you what the options are. So we can just fix this by removing the A, and we're successful again. Okay, available, that should be a Boolean, yes or no. Yes or no. So we'll just say available would be z.boolean. Z okay, on to the next. Experience, so this one's interesting because it's actually an array of something. So we have z.array and 
into this function, we need to pass what should each element of the array include. So we can come up here and we can define a new one called experience, and it will also be a z, uh, z or Z interchangeable. I'm Canadian, we say Z, but uh, folks in the US say Z, I believe. Um, so this is an object, its lang we'll say is a string, and its years should be a number, but we want it to be a positive number because uh, negative five years doesn't make sense. Like in five years, I'm gonna learn this language so trust me, no, we don't. Never trust the input from the user. So copy this in here and now that should be good again. Now there's a whole bunch of extra validations you can add. You can say like it's uh, greater than five, less than or equal to a hundred. Even with array, you can say, I expect a minimum of one element, a maximum of 10 elements. So you can take this a lot, a lot further than we're doing today. But um, just gonna hit save. I'm going to send, it's still successful, so if we change this to a negative, now we see that the experience, uh, there's a value that should be greater than zero, so it's giving us that error there. And if we come to the console, now we're getting all of the data because we've finally defined the schema that encapsulates all of the fields we're sending in. So name email, confirm email, etc. So we're actually not going to deal with coupon at all. I actually put that there because that's a field that we weren't expecting. We're just going to ignore it. Um, remember, if you did strict hit save, it would then raise an exception saying, hey, we received an, a coupon, um, but we don't need to be strict. There's also a thing called pass through that allows sort of fields to pass through that you hadn't defined in your schema, but uh, we're not going to get into that. It's available if you're interested. But what I want to do is basically provide a way to compare these email and confirm email because we want them to be the same. And you do that through a function called refine. So what we do is refine. The first thing it receives is a function that's going to receive the data. And what we can do is just return a Boolean, true or false, of whether it's valid or not. So the refinement that we're going to add in is we're going to compare email triple equal to confirm email. And then we want to provide a message that shows up um, if this is false. So we'll just pass an object in and here's the message. So we'll say email and confirm uh, lower C should be equal. And if we want to, actually let's just save it at this point, make the request. So email and confirm email should be equal. So notice this showed up in the form errors, sort of it's generic to the whole object. What if we wanted to add an error that showed up on the confirm email field? So we can do that by providing a path of where the error should exist basically. So we do an array and we just say that it should show up on confirm email. So if we were to run this again, now the error doesn't show up on form errors, it shows up on field errors on the confirm email field. And that's actually everything I wanted to cover today. So notice we didn't actually save it to the database, we just console.logged it. But you can imagine sort of right here is where you'd say, okay, the data looks good, now I can go save this to my database, I can trust it. But we really handled all of the validation of that using Zod. And the cool thing is the data you get back is all typed correctly because Zod is built in TypeScript with TypeScript in mind. So it's saying there may be a website URL, could be string null or undefined, so you're going to have to deal with that wherever you're saving this to. But name will be a string, I can guarantee it. Email is a string. Now TypeScript doesn't know that it's a type of email or a type of URL, but it, it sort of aligns with the TypeScript types. Here it's saying that it's it's going to be um, these three literal values. It's a union of them, so one of these three values, available as a Boolean experience, um, is an array of an object that, if you were to expand this, contains those um, either lang and years, which is a number. So hope you enjoyed this video. This is how Zod works. It's way more powerful than we covered today. 
There's something called a super refinement. You can merge different objects together. You can like extract certain values. It's way more compatible with TypeScript than I even showed. Um, so I encourage you to go check out their documentation, try it out. And if you're more interested in using it on the client side, it actually comes with a plugin to use with Formac, Formic sorry, or React Hook Form. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I'm going to be trying to, to produce a lot more content like that that we just covered this year. Take care. Bye.